welcome to the beer review of me, Jake. So we are continuing our little look into Guinness this week. And if I've done my calculations correct, today is actually St. Patrick's Day, where this beer is normally consumed in a vast quantity. Oh, I always, I always bring it. I always good to put it on. Match it. So yes, this is none other than Guinness's Stout, but the draft version. And of course they put draft on there because it's supposed to be similar to when you get Guinness poured from the tap. And of course they achieve that by using the widget. Here's one I prepared earlier. But how, how does how does this actually work? And it was on those whoa, 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 I've dropped it. And it was it's one of those things where you sort of just you think you know, and you know there's nitrogen involved, but I actually looked up the process. So this is a nitrogen field ball. That's popped into the Guinness during canning. And then before sealing, they put a little bit more nitrogen in there, seal it. The can then becomes pressurized. As the pressure increases, the nitrogen filled ball actually draws in some beer as well. So then obviously when you open the can and release the pressure, the nitrogen and the beer that's inside the widget comes gushing out. And that's what gives the beer that sort of creamy effervescence. Yeah, so that, that, that's just my little... That's just my quick take on how the widget works. So if you really want to know the process, there's there's some dedicated videos to the widget. But that was just my little my little quick take on it. And there we go. There's the sound. And then we want to do a nice vigorous pour into a nice big glass. There you have it. There's some, there's just something about it that just makes me smile. Just seeing that, I love, I love a nitro beer. I do love a nitro beer. Oh, I could, I could watch that all day. Still mesmerising. Still mesmerising. So we'll just let that, we'll just let that settle. I'll do some sort of. Sp speed it up thing. Let's get into it shall we? I haven't had just sort of, I haven't had Guinness Draft in a very long time. It used to be a go-to sort of when I, when I was getting when I was getting bored of lager. I used to drink, I can't believe I used to drink just pints and pints of Guinness on a night out. It is a very very dark brown beer. It's not jet black and then look at that creamy voluptuous nitrogen powered head. Let's go for a little smell on this shall we? I mean it's unquestionably Guinness and for me it's a little bit charcoaly. It's quite a roasty coffee aroma to it as well. It's not a bad smelling beer. A little bit of a coppery twang to it. Yeah a bit of a bit of a dry roasted peanut thing. It's a lot of dry stuff. It's charcoal, coffee, dry roasted peanuts. But that's all about that creamy head so let's give it a taste. Cheers. I mean, it is smooth as hell, which does make it inc incredibly drinkable. It is quite a satisfying thing to drink. Flavour-wise, it's it's sweeter than the aroma leads you to believe. There is there is a sort of a, a generic milk chocolatey sweetness to it, but it does finish quite dry. A little kick of bitterness on there. It's not the most bitter thing in the world. Incredibly easy drinking. I don't think I even said the ABV. What is ABV on this now? I can't remember. 4.1. So incredibly easy drinking. That little bit of nuttiness on the aroma comes through again. I mean, it's, it's really a beer that you do not need to think too much about. It is by no means the best beer. But it's far from the worst. I mean, I'm not going to be getting it in my fridge regularly, but it has been nice to revisit it. So let me know your thoughts on the Guinness draft cans in the comments below. That's everything from me on the Guinness draft. I've been Jake, remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. And happy St. Patrick's Day. Cheers.